part two, really, of what we started last week. But this, of course, is our 32nd week. I was looking, and we started Revelation way back at the, the, the end of April. That's whenever we started. And, and someone said, how long is this going to take? And I said, how long, ever long it takes. Amen? <laughs> we, are, we are going little by little. And uh, this is definitely the, the most in-depth that I have ever uh, went myself into studying this great book. Um, but it, it's very necessary, amen? It's very necessary that we, of course, do this, and uh, we don't want to rush any part of this. We want to make sure that we're, that we're getting all the juice out of it, amen? And that we're able to, to absorb and, and digest what the Lord has for us here. And uh, last week, we, of course, started the sixth trumpet. That is where um, we have been. And I'll go ahead and ask uh, Brother Tyler to go ahead and bring this up here on the screen just to show us exactly what, what, you know, what we have going. And of course, we're, we're calling this message Merciless Massacre. And we'll see exactly why here in just a little bit, why, what, what, what that means and why that means, um, why I feel like that's, that's a fitting title. But we have went through, um, of course, seven seal judgments. And really as that seal, uh, as the scroll was opened, and now we have a full view of what it looks like, that being a, a title deed to the earth, we have seen in the seventh seal, there came seven trumpets. And we, 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 we went through the first four uh, pretty quickly. Of course, those were what we called the judgment of the thirds. And now, uh, a couple weeks ago, we went through the fifth trumpet, and that was a little bit more in depth about these, these demonic locusts that came up out of the pit Last week, we saw the sixth angel step forth and sound the trumpet. And we're going to read it here in just a minute. We're going to go back to, to verse 13 of chapter 9 and read through this. But what we saw last week is we saw uh, once this sixth trumpet was blown and sounded, that of course it was, it was a signal to loose four angels out of the Euphrates River. And we showed this, and, and, and if you remember, the voice that told this sixth uh, angel to sound the trumpet came from what was called one of the four horns or four corners of the golden altar of incense. And go ahead and, and, and flip it on over here to this next one. Um, and we, we saw that, the, that this golden altar was something that we had seen before. We saw, that if you remember back in chapter 5, we saw... That, uh, uh, that the souls were underneath the altar, that the souls of the ones that were beheaded for the cause of Christ, that their souls was underneath this altar. Once again, and they were speaking out for vengeance. They were crying out for vengeance, praying that the Lord would, would avenge uh, 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 their, their, their sacrifice. Well, that was the first place that we saw it. Well, then, just a couple chapters later, over in chapter number 8, we saw it once again that it was the, uh, the, the, the priestly angel filled the censer. And of course the censer, you can see it right there in, in his hand as he's holding it. He filled the censer with fire and threw it to the earth. And I told you that this was the place of mercy. All through the Old Testament, this was the place where people went to get pardon from their sin. Well, of course, they, they did not accept that pardon that they didn't accept the 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 supreme pardon of Jesus Christ so now what has happened is the place of mercy has now become the very place of judgment and this is where the judgment is coming from so he feels he feels that censer full of fire and he throws it to earth and of course that unleashed uh, uh, the, the the judgment there in chapter 8 well now, here in chapter 9, we see that once again, the place that should have been the place of mercy, right now as I'm speaking, understand that it's still a place of mercy. That, that, that the sacrifice of Jesus and what He did has paid fully for our sin. Okay? And it is, it is, it is, it is our uh, decision, it is our option whether we want to accept that or reject that. Amen? That's, that's, that's what all of this is. And, and the place, and realize that everything in the Old Testament was just 
a, a, a picture of what was already in heaven. So whenever the blueprint was given to Moses, whenever he went up on Mount Sinai, and he of course was given the, the uh, uh, stone tablets that had the Ten Commandments and the law of God on them, and of course he was given the instruction on what the furniture was going to be like in the tabernacle and later on in the temple that was in Jerusalem, everything was just a picture of what was already in heaven. In chapter 11 of, of, of uh, Revelation, we're going to see a temple. We're going to see a temple that is measured and it's talking about the temple that's measured in heaven and also a reflection of a third temple that is literally going to be built on this earth. Okay? So, 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 so understand that everything that we see, it's not just by accident. This was all given as, as a reflection of what's already occurring and already has happened in heaven. Well, this is the thing. You don't need the animal sacrifices anymore because the blood of Jesus the, the whole book of Hebrews is dedicated to telling us how Jesus is better than anything that could be offered here on earth, okay? And, and about how that Jesus only had to bleed and die one time, once and for all, for all of mankind, never to have to be offered again, amen? So once again, everything has been paid for. So we saw that this being the place where, where the, the petitions were burned to, to God, because as you can see that smoke that is, that is rising up, it, what, what was said is that all of your prayers, all of your petitions, all of your forgiveness, everything that, that, that you were repenting of, remember because it was out there in the outer court at the brazen altar, that's where the blood was shed. So then they took the coals from the brazen altar, the brass altar, one priest twice a day would walk into the holy place or the inner court and there would be that altar. And he would take the coals from what was burned out here and he would offer it for, uh, to, to the, uh, uh, burning the incense here and that was saying if the coals never made it from this altar to that altar, the blood was shed in vain. You understand? You had to have the coals that were brought from the, from the brass altar to the golden altar in order to, to uh, uh, seal that forgiveness. And that smoke that was rising up was, was the prayers of the people, the prayers for forgiveness, the prayers for healing, the prayers uh, uh, for, for anything that, that they were bringing that sacrifice for was burned before the Lord. Well, now it's burning before the Lord in heaven and now, instead of the place of mercy, what is it saying? It's the same prayers, the same petitions that's talked about in chapter 5 and chapter 6, and it's crying out for vengeance. Okay? So now, it's not mercy. Now, it's judgment. Okay? Amen. And we saw that whenever, whenever that, that, that voice spoke from that corner, that horns, see those, those, those little horns that's sticking up on all four corners there, when the voice spoke, what was the voice? The voice of God. When the voice spoke, understand that the angel was released and that, that was his signal to sound that sixth trumpet. When the sixth trumpet is sounding, then what does that do? That unleashes these four angels that are at the Euphrates River. Go ahead and fl flip the slide and we'll see what this looked like. Remember, the great river Euphrates, one of the four rivers, one of the four rivers of the original Garden of Eden, all the way from, 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 from that time of Eden. Also, the most eastern boundary of the Promised Land. So understand that this river has been a major, major player all through the Old Testament. And then it said it had four angels that was bound. Well, we don't bind good angels. These are fallen angels. These are demonic angels, okay? These are loosed to do the deeds that we're getting ready to see going to take place, okay? But, but remember, we got into why there was four. And I said that it's very interesting that angels, are fallen angels, uh, chief princes is what the Old Testament also calls them, chief princes are territorial. They have specific powers over specific geographic locations here on earth. They're, back in Daniel, I took you, I said, this is not just me giving you my opinion, this is Bible. Go all the way back to Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10, and I told you that Michael, 
he was, he was, he was uh, 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 delayed because there was a battle that was going on and he was, he was wrestling against what was called the chief prince of Persia. The prince of Persia. What was that? That was a demonic spirit. Well, you read down just a few more verses and what you'll see is there's also a chief prince of Grecia or Greece. Well, that's two of the four uh, world empires that, had, that, that came and held Israel in, into captivity. Okay? You, you only need what? The chief prince of Babylon, which was the first. The Babylonian Empire was, of course, uh, 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 over, not really overthrown, but absorbed by the Medo-Persians. That would be the prince of Persia. Then that was ab ab absorbed by the Greeks and, and Alexander the Great. Okay? So that's the chief prince of Greece. And then you had the Roman Empire when Jesus, of course, was actually here on this earth. So understand that all four, all four of these world empires, it would make sense that these four empires are linked to these four angels. Because after these four angels are loosed out of the Euphrates area, the Euphrates River, we're going to see a what's called a revised Roman Empire. A, a, a new world empire that is coming on. And we see that right now in our day. Our geopolitical uh, layout as globalization is taking place and bringing everybody back together. The same type of, of spirit and the same type of mechanism that we saw in Genesis chapter 11 when a man by the name of Nimrod brought everybody together and there was a one world power. Okay? That's what we're seeing now. That's why whenever we have politicians that, that, that feel as if it's a good idea to bring everybody together, understand that they're under a demonic power. That is, that is, a, demonic, that is a demonic speech that they want to say. It's good for the United States to be linked to China. It's good. It's good for our economy. It's good for us to have all of these, 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 these good trading uh, uh, grounds and these agreements that we have. It's good for us. That's why they don't want a country with borders. Because you want to bring everybody together. Everybody can, can, can come and go as they please. The crime can, can, can do what it wants. Everything can blossom. Everybody comes and goes. Well, understand that we're the only country that's stupid enough to keep doing that. Realize that. Other countries, other countries, you just try to walk into to, to their country. Try it. Try it. In fact, go down to Texas, go down to Texas and try to walk across to Mexico. See what happens. Just see what happens. Understand, it's bad whenever third world countries have better security measures than the United States does. But why? It's done on purpose. This is not accident. This is not, this is not just somebody uh, saying, well, we just don't have good policy. Baloney. That's not what that is. It's done because they understand that the United States of America is the most powerful country in the world. So in order for globalization to take place, what do you have to do? You have to tear down the greatest power in the world to put everybody else on a level playing field. Lord have mercy. Woo! We're getting there. We're getting. Let's go back and let's start reading here. Verse number 13 of chapter 9. Watch what happens. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared, notice this, for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of janseth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued a, a fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the, by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. And their powers is in their mouth and in their tails, uh, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and, they, uh, uh, and with them they do hurt. 
And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of their works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. Now notice this right here. So as we get here, we've already talked about these angels, of course, being, being unleashed. And we just went over and explained to them about how I feel like this is these four demonic powers of these previous world empires. Babylonian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, Greek Empire, and the old Roman Empire. And what is this showing us? This, I believe, is giving us foreshadowing as to what's going to come because what you're going to have in the new empire that we're going to see here that will be under uh, 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 the power of the Antichrist, it'll be all four of these in one. And it'll be what's called a new revised Roman Empire, okay? Now, notice this. What we see here, if you think back to our previous judgment of uh, trumpet judgment number five, if you remember, death uh, would, would, would flee. There was no death for five months. These locusts would come and they would torture you and they would sting you and they would, they would torment people, is what it said, for five months. And it said that they would seek death and death would flee from them. Well, what did that just say? That just said now, here in this sixth trumpet, this, this sixth trumpet judgment, now these are coming to slay a third part. So what does that mean? Death has returned. Death has returned full force here with this new judgment. It's all come back. And understand what, 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 what's happened. It said that these angels have been prepared, and the Bible says, for the hour, for the day, for the month, and for the year. What does that mean? That means that they have been prepared for a specific time that only the Lord knows. We heard similar language to this to what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 36. We've quoted it many times that it is not for us to know the day nor the hour. What is that saying? That's saying that you ain't supposed to know. That's saying that the Lord, the Lord Himself, understand, has, has, has limits. He has limits to the judgments. And he's also put it on a, on a specific exact timetable that nobody knows but him. He said, but these angels have been prepared. Notice that. They, they, these are, this is not by accident. This is not just allowing the devil to do what he wants to do. He said that this has been prepared. That means that, means that, that this has been forethought. That means that this has been here for a long time. That the Lord has it for the day, for the hour, for, for the month, and for the year in which this will happen. If you go back to chapter 6, verse 8, you don't have to turn there, but if you go back to chapter 6, verse 8, if you remember whenever the fourth seal was opened, notice this, when the fourth seal was opened, and that was the, that was the judgment of the pestilence, if you remember, okay? If you remember that, that that killed, remember, that they were killed with death, is what the Bible said, and that being translated into pestilence, that one quarter, one-fourth of the earth was killed by that judgment. Okay? Now here we are, and what does it say? One-third of the population of earth has been killed with this one. Now, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not a mathematician, but I can tell you that... One fourth plus one third, somebody do some math real quick, in the lowest reduced form is seven twelfths. That means it's over half. Over half of the earth's population has been killed at this point. Do y'all get that? Seven twelfths of the earth's population has been killed at this point. That's just in these two judgments. That's not counting the war. That's not counting the famine. That's not counting the, the poisonous uh, fresh water that we saw with wormwood. That's not counting any of that. Just seven twelfths has been taken out by two judgments. So we can, we can safely say that just based off of that, that over half 
of the earth's population, our 8 billion that we have, if it happened right now, would be gone. Do we see this? Do you realize that that amount of graves is inconceivable? Okay? It's, it's impossible to even understand that amount of death that has occurred here on this earth. That, 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 to, to think about that. But then, here we come to something different. Now this is, this is what I really want you to focus on. The Bible says that it's 200,000 thousands. That's 200 million, okay? 200 million. Now way back in the 70s, there was a theory that, that, that came about... Because what they said is that this 200,000, 200 million was the Chinese army. Because what, it, what was interesting is that back then, back then, that, that they were the only army that was large enough to have 200,000, 000, 000 or, or 200 million soldiers, okay? Because they had that. Well, China isn't even the most populated country in the world. India is, okay? So uh, understand it doesn't even, doesn't even uh, 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 make sense in today's terms anyway. But this is what I also want you to see. What they will most of the time do, and this was, a, this was a, a, a popular way to study this, is that they will put this sixth trumpet judgment with uh, chapter 16, verse number 12, when it talks about the kings of the east coming. And they'll say, okay, the kings of the east coming in chapter 16, and now this 200,000 thousands army coming, that... The, that's automatically, there you go, there's China. That's a problem with that. Because number one, we're at the sixth, notice this, we're at the sixth trumpet judgment. Chapter 16 is talking about the sixth bowl judgment. Different. That's not the same, okay? That is not the same. So here we are at a completely different thing. But understand that th th there's also some more issues that lies with this. Do you realize that 200,000 thousand men, 200 million men, do you realize if they lined up shoulder to shoulder a mile across, that that army would be 100 miles long? Think about that. That army would be 100 miles long. That's a big army. That's impossible army, okay? But it, but, but, but it gets even more than that. Do you understand that there's no way that a man army, a human army, can march across mountains and march across seas of 200,000 thousand. There's no way. Because where is it coming from? Euphrates. It's coming from the area right there, the area of Iraq, the area of Syria, the area of Turkey. This is where it's saying that they're coming from. So understand that, that, that the old typology of what they felt like they had figured out years ago, they, what they did is it's kind of like taking puzzle pieces and cram them together and this thing won't fit, it's aggravating me, so I'm going to shove it in and make it fit. Okay? It doesn't work. you got to give, you got to take what the Bible gives you. Okay? You have to go with what the Bible actually gives you. So understand that I think with all of my heart that this is best understood as not a human army. This is not a human army because the same ones that will say that this is a, a human Chinese army will also tell you that, that, okay, well, all of this detail in chapter 17, what you're really, what John is really seeing is he's seeing helicopters and he's seeing rocket launchers and he's seeing airplanes, he's seeing jets, he's seeing all of this technology that we have today and he don't know how to explain it. So what does he do? He explains it as horses and lions. And that don't work. That, that does not work. And I'll show you the reason why that it doesn't work. But I want to go back once again and look at verse 17 one more time because I want, I want you to see this. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of janseth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Now notice this right here. The colors... The colors were fire, janseth, and brimstone. What is that? Fire, red. Okay? The color of red. In fact, if you look at the actual Greek word, look it up, 
it translates into red, okay? But then not only that, but it says brimstone. What is, what is, what is the color of brimstone? It is a sulfuric gas, a color of sulfur, which is yellow, okay? Now then, you got to go the, the color of Janseth. What's the color of Janseth? That is a dark blue going into black. Any shade of, of a dark, dark blue going into a black color. So what do you have? You have red, you have yellow, you have a dark blue to black that is there on their breastplates. It's giving you this, this, this type of, of, of symbolism because once again, the Bible will tell you when it's being symbolic. It'll say, you use those great words as like and as and it'll explain it to you like this. But notice, heads of lions. What is that? That means that they're fierce, that means they're strong, that means they're determined. That means they stalk their victims to slaughter. That's what a lion does, okay? But notice this. Out of their mouths, okay? Out of their mouths, there will be this fire, there will be this smoke, and there will be this brimstone. Those three things once again. And verse 18 says one-third of mankind was killed. Notice this. Wasn't killed by the lion biting them. It wasn't killed by the horses running over them. Notice it says that they were killed by the fire and the smoke and, and, and the brimstone that comes out of their mouth. Okay? That's what kills them. Now this is what I ask you. Can a demon kill? Can a demon kill? Absolutely. A man can kill. Okay? This is, what, this is how I ask you this right here. Because remember, back in Mark chapter 9, Matthew chapter 17, there was a demon-possessed boy, and what did the demon-possessed boy keep doing? The demon that was inside the boy kept throwing himself where? Into the fire, okay? They've always been connected with, 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 with bodily harm, because what was the, what the remember Gadara? Remember the demon-possessed man that had, the le had legion inside of him? What was he doing? He was cutting himself. Remember that? It was always about bodily destruction. So here we have this right here once again. But they kill with fire, smoke. What does that mean? Suffocating people. Suffocating people. Do you realize that, that, that people in fires... Those people who, who have been in any type of fire, most of them will not die because of their burns. They will die from smoke inhalation injuries. Okay? So that will actually do that. But notice this right here. But then sulfuric gas, this, this sulfur gas, what does that do? Asphyxiate them. It burns their airways from the inside. So therefore, we, 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 we see all this happening. So something about this demonic force okay, that is coming through and out of their mouths. I don't know if, if it, I, I, I don't know. Nobody knows. All we're doing is we're taking what the Bible gives us. We're taking what the Bible says. We're, 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 we're breaking it down as into the lowest form that we can break it down and at some point you just have to say, that's what the Bible says. Either believe it or not. We don't know what to say. But then, but, but we can get hints from other parts of the Word of God. Chapter 14, verse number 10. In fact, flip over to chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse number 10. And I want you to see something here. Chapter 14, verse number 10. Notice what it says. The same, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, Okay? And he shall be tormented with what? Fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now look in verse number 11. And the smoke, notice this, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. It's giving us here that, that the ones who worship the devil take the mark of the beast, that this is going to be similar, very similar, to the same judgment. Now notice this. These are people on earth, these are people on earth being killed by the same torment that they will endure forever. They will endure it forever. So, so the same smoke, the same fire, what, what is happening? The judgment of hell is on earth. 
Do you see this? This is, this is what we're seeing. This is why I know it doesn't make sense right now to a rational... If you're just saying, well, right, I'm thinking about this, human, uh, this, this, this rationally. I'm thinking about this within human terms. Okay? But understand that we also don't understand how to describe the fact that the sky has been split like a scroll either. We don't understand, we don't understand what it means for stars to fall out of the sky either. We don't know what it means for a third of the sun to be darkened a third of the day. We don't know that either. We've never seen that. That's the point. We've never seen that. All these prophets, including Jesus Himself, saying this is a time like we have never seen before. Okay? This is something that is, that, is, that is unexplainable to our natural mind. But those are the people who worship the beast. Well, then in uh, chapter 19, verse 20, the beast, the false prophet, are thrown into the lake of fire, and it's a fire that burns with brimstone, is what the Bible says, okay? Well, and then in chapter 20, verse 10, the devil is thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone is what the Bible says, okay? And then in 21, uh, chapter 21, verse number 8, the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. So we're seeing this constantly. The burning, the suffocating, the smothering of, of the sulfuric gas, the uh, brimstone. And if that wasn't enough, verse number 19, verse number 19, back in chapter 9, notice this, that their power is in their mouths. And then he adds another component. He said, oh, by the way, it's also in their tails. He said it's in their tails. It's like a serpent. And it does hurt, is what it says. It does hurt. It's, it, it, this is something. So, so what is he saying? That it creates devastation in both ways. That it's inescapable. That there's no way that, that, that it, it, if it doesn't get you this way, it's going to get you this way. Both directions. Understand this. So remember, this is a vision. This is imagery. The Lord is representing it to him, to John, the destructive power in terms that he can understand and that the reader can understand all the way back in 95 AD. That he can get this right here. So what was destructive in their day? Well, I told you that the previous judgment, Locust, there was nothing that was more destructive to a Middle Eastern mind in 95 AD than an army of locusts. That it would be completely devastating. That it, that, that it would gnaw any green vegetation all the way down to the ground. That it would destroy everything. And then there would come famine. There would come pestilence because of this great army. Well, now here he is, and he's, and he's using the same type of, of, of imagery because he's using horses, he's using lions, he's using serpents, and, and, and all of these things that they can understand that would be devastating and powerful and that it would cause bodily torture and harm to a person. And this is why 200 million, 200 million rocket launchers doesn't make sense. Rocket launcher. Understand this because w w according to this, you would have to have a rocket launcher coming out your backside. I want to see that. I want to see that. Real Man, I want to see that. Understand that. It, see why it doesn't work. See why it doesn't happen. Because this, 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 uh, this, this is not, it doesn't make sense and notice that some of this isn't supposed to make sense spiritually, but I'm talking about rocket launchers ain't going to make sense, okay? That's all I'm going to say. But understand that this is all happening at the same time that we live in. Think about just, just the technology that we have now. It's all happening with internet. It's all happening with live stream. It's all happening with television, satellite TVs, it's all happening with schools and universities and colleges and people still trying to go to work. See, I think we, we get the image that, boy, when that, that tribulation kicks in, ain't nobody going to be going to work. Everybody's going to sit at home. And, and no, 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 no. These are people that are still trying to go on with everyday life. Think about that. They'll still be people, listen, people will still be planning their vacations, they'll still be planning their cruises. They'll still be uh, uh, going to the clubs. They'll still be going to the bars. They'll still be trying to do... In fact, they'll probably go to the bars a whole lot more, to be honest with you. 
Because about the time they look up and see the see, because the Bible said they're not repenting. So what do you think they're doing? They were seeking death. So think about think about the moral standards of people are actually lowering as this is happening. So 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 instead of becoming more aware. I mean, the gospel's being preached at this time greater than it's ever been preached ever in human history. And people are turning a deaf ear to it. And we're going to get to that here in just a second because this is devastating. This is absolutely devastating as to what's happening here. And understand this, you know, I would say to myself, if I was an unbeliever and I was in this situation, I'd be convicted. I'd be converted. Wouldn't you? I mean, I would, I would fall down on my face and say, God, have mercy on me. Help us. Help us. But by now, you have to remember, these people have seen it all. They've seen it all. They've seen wormwood. They've seen the stars falling. They've seen the sun darken. They've seen the famines. They've seen it all. Understand that they've seen so much, they've become calloused. They have become calloused as, as, as to, to what it even means. Well, this is just... Let me tell you what they're going to say. Tell you right now what they're going to say. We should have took care of the earth better. Am, am I telling the truth? Boy, we should, have, we should have treated Mother Nature much better than what we did. We should have done... And, and listen, and then they're going to get themselves convinced that we deserve this. We, we, we done this to ourselves... Joe Biden and John Kerry warned us, Al Gore warned us for many years that, 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 that we should have done this. We should have done it. And, and my God, we didn't, we didn't take care of the polar bears good enough. And this is what's got, this, this is where we're at. Do you see this? this that, that's exactly the type of, of, of garbage that they're going to put out. And then they're going to say, oh, you, you better start now, or it's going to get worse. It's going to get a whole lot worse. You better hurry up and do something about it. It's going to get a whole lot worse than, 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 than what it is now. So understand that, that, that where we are, that, that, that where we're at at this point in time. And, but verse 20 says this, The rest of mankind repented not. Repented not. Repentance is always the issue. Have you understood that? Yeah. Repentance is always the issue. If people don't repent, they what? Perish. They perish. That's why Luke 24, 47 says that repentance is to, be, is, is to be preached to all nations. To all nations. Why does true... What does it look like whenever somebody truly repents? They turn from their sin. They turn. A 180 degree from their sin. That is repentance. It's not being uh, regretful of it remorseful of it, it's truly repenting and turning from it. Completely turning from it. And notice, notice verse 21 once again says, one more time, they did not repent. He said they did not repent. They didn't turn away. So twice it says all this has happened and nobody repented. They kept on doing what they were doing. In fact, whenever, get this, the seventh trumpet blows. The bowl judgments come and start in chapter 16 and verse number 9. And guess what it says there? It says they blasphemed the name of God and repented not. This is more coming. Verse number 11 of chapter 16. Once again it says they blasphemed the name of heaven and repented not. One more time. In verse 21, what does it say? Huge hundred pound hailstones fall out of the sky coming out of heaven and they blaspheme God because of the plague. Understand that. You see that, 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 that they've reached the point now that they are of resolute hardness. Complete hardness. They have fully yielded. Remember what, what we talked about yesterday. That there's two domains the domain of heaven, the domain of hell. And it's warring every day with every man. And it's your decision of what you will yield to. Here, they have fully yielded to hell. They have fully accepted and embraced Satan, demons, death. And guess what? They will literally worship Satan. In fact, chapter 13 will show us how they will worship Satan. 
They will worship Him and literally worship Him. And understand this, in the end of this vision, John identifies five sins that are representative of their uh, defiance against God. And this is what he said. He said that it's idolatry. It's works of their hands that they make these idols and their man-made gods, their, 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 their little G's. And John talks about the idols of wood and the idols of stone and the idols of brass and silver and gold. And this is what he says. These little, these little idols, they can't see. They can't see. They can't hear. They can't walk. What is, what, what is he saying? He's saying these idols don't have to suffer like you are. These idols are nothing but, 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 but pieces of, of material. But what is he saying? He's saying these idols don't have to face what you're facing. But what are you doing? You're crazy enough to call out to a bunch of idols that don't know anything about what you're going through. That's, that's, that's what he's saying. He's saying how, how, how pointless is this? The point is, is that those gods aren't going to do anything to help you. They're not going to help you. But the only one who can help you, you repent not. You repent not. But they are so resolutely committed to their gods that in spite of the inability of their gods to do anything, they stick with them. They stick with them. They say, oh yes, well, these, my idols, the things that my hands have made, let me have more of it, let me have more of it. And the idol worship is... In other words, watch this right here very closely. Watch this. You hear nothing else i got to say tonight. Listen very closely. Worshiping nothing is the definition of worshiping demons. I want you to listen. Worshiping nothing is the definition of worshiping demons. Do you know why? Because you will always worship something even if it's nothing. Somebody better tweet that out or something. Did you hear what I just said? You will always worship something even if it's nothing. Uh, okay? There's no such thing as an atheist. No such thing. I don't care how much you want to say it. There's no such thing as an atheist because why? Failing to worship the one true God just means that by default you will worship a false God. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. See, understand that that's what it's coming to. That's, that's here because understand there's still one more trumpet to go. There's still one more trumpet to go and then after that there's seven bowls to go. We've not finished by, by, by any means. But notice this. Our Lord is compassionate. He's compassionate. And the reason that all these warnings are here for, are for us. They're for everybody. Understand this. That's why. That's why we have the Word of God. It's to warn people. You know, a great old preacher said something one time. His name is Vance Harvener, and this is what he said. Listen very closely to his quote, and I quote, the real test of how much we believe of prophetic truth is what we're doing to warn men to flee from the wrath to come. To believe the solemn truths of prophecy and then make our way complacently through a world of sin and shame is not merely unfortunate, it's criminal. Think about, what is, what is he saying? He's saying that here we are, that we look in the eyes of a world headed to hell. We look them in the eyes every day. We look them in the eyes, and as bad as this judgment is, it still doesn't even compare to the eternal torment of hell. doesn't even compare. But what is but 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 what he says is he says that yes it'll be awful if they have to experience that it'll be awful but it doesn't compare to hell it doesn't compare to eternal hell how much worse is that going to be but yet this is it if we know this and we don't do anything to keep them from this it's not just unfortunate it's criminal it's criminal. Amen. It's criminal. Meaning what? The Bible says that the blood is on our hands. Our hands. So this is it. If we believe it, if we believe it, it affects our actions. Or else it's just a good story. It's a good story. 
It's, 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 it makes a great sci-fi movie. Great. It's just a story. Or if we really believe that this is what's coming, are we really going to do what we need to do to keep people from this? Now, Ryan, you don't understand. They don't want to hear it. I know they don't want to hear it. Let me, tell you, let me take you back to a time when you didn't want to hear it. You didn't want to hear it either. But this is what it takes. It takes the Holy Spirit dealing with their hearts. It takes the Word of God, takes the Word, the Word of God stirring up their faith, and then it takes the Holy Spirit using you as a mouthpiece to speak to them. That's what it takes. If you believe it, if you believe it, then you'll be allowed, you'll allow yourself to be used by Him to tell them about it, to keep them from this. Or yet, it's criminal. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your blessings. We thank You, Lord, for this wonderful, wonderful time in Your Word. God, I ask that You'll speak to hearts all over this place. Lord, if there's one here tonight that's lost, one that doesn't know You, Lord, I ask that You'll deal with their heart. Lord, may they come. May they come tonight and call upon Your name. For You said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, that's Your precious holy Word. We uplift you, we glorify you, we thank you right now for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. Deal with hearts right now. Deal with this church. Watch over us and help us and use us in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Stand all over the place if you're able. And let's gather around this altar. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our church. And if you're here tonight and you're lost, I ask you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. You need somebody to pray with you. You come right on. You come right on. Oh, yes. Come right on.